bear with me here as I climb inside. Um, a little quieter. Uh, Interior-wise, I mean, it's a simple setup. It's convenient. Everything's right here within reach. Um, dash is nice. One of the nice things, uh, or the neat little features, I guess, about this car is the fact that the dash lights can be turned off at night. And, you know, when I read about the feature, I didn't think it was a big deal, but having driven the car several times at night, it's nice to be able to turn off the panel, the, the lights on the, on the dash panel. Uh, the only one that really stays illuminated is the speedometer light up to about 90. Everything else is off, so you don't see any of the lights on in the car at night, and it really does help in terms of your vision and uh, cutting down on glare at night. So that's kind of a neat little feature. Um, you know, Saab's, Saab's kind of quirky. They always have been. Um, and that's fine, uh, but they have little things that are, that are kind of odd, like the, uh, the key. Here's the ignition key. Um, I was told by the dealer that this car is actually impossible to steal. Cannot, can I steal this car because you, you cannot hotwire it? The ignition is here between the seats. Key goes in. As soon as you put the key in, it recognizes the key, and um, you can hear one of the relays in the panel click on. Um, ignition on and obviously start. Pull the key out, you're done. Now w one of the neat things about this key um, is that should should the, I guess there's a little battery in here, should the battery um, uh, get really weak or I guess die completely and you have to get back into the car. I'm gonna put the camera down here for a second. I don't know if you can see this but I can take the key and I can pull it apart and now I'm left with this. So this will get me into the car. Even if the uh, uh, the remote doesn't work, I can still get back into the car, which I thought was, was kind of a neat feature. And I believe Volvo has that same feature. So so that's, that's pretty cool. And again, being able to turn the dash lights off is a nice feature. The sound system in the car is great. The upgraded Bose system is, is great. Um, uh, I don't know how many speakers are in here. I guess there's maybe eight speakers in here. Um, sounds great. I XM radio is, is something I was looking for, so I was happy to get that. The wheel, steering wheel um, tilts and telescopes in and out, which is a nice feature. Um, the seats are extremely comfortable. Um, I don't think I've ever owned a more comfortable car, to be honest. Um, just driving this is, is not only fun, but it's just very comfortable sitting here um, uh, in, in the driver's seat. Uh, if the, whether or not the passenger seat is comfortable, I don't know, and I really could care less because I, <laughs> I'm not going to be sitting there. So. Um, one of my issues with the car, one of the, one of the things I'm not real happy with is the amount, or I should say the lack of storage space in the car. I didn't think I had that much crap to store, but evidently I do. And, you know, Saab gives you this little compartment right here, very small, one below it. And, um, this little compartment here slides up, and there's a very small compartment here between the seats with another charger inside may sound like a lot, but you know, it's not. It's, it's very, very, very tight and there's very little storage space. As an example, I'm going to take my wallet and I can assure you my wallet is very thin. There's not much, not much money in my wallet. But I can just about get my wallet in that space right there. So that's how much room you have here. This space here, I can fit my phone sideways in there. And I could probably fit two phones in there if I had to, with some room to spare in terms of height. Not a lot of storage space. Um, the other thing that that's, that Saab seems to be, um, has never been known for, is their lack of, or has been known for, I guess, is their lack of cup holders. For some reason, I guess, people in Sweden don't, don't need cup holders. I, I don't know, but um, there's one small cup holder here. This folds down and becomes one cup holder. So I could put my bottle of water here and then there's a cup holder that Saab has always been known for in the dash and that opens up and I can put my drink right there so great I have two cup holders now if I'm traveling alone that's all I need if I've got one or two other people in the car then it gets a little tough and there are cup, cup holders in the back in between the seats um, but I guess it would just be nice to have another cup holder on the side panel somewhere or maybe a bigger cup holder in here and a little more storage as well. Now the glove box is very deep. The glove box in this car goes way back. I, mean, 
I don't know if you can see that or not. I know it's kind of sunny in here. But it, it goes way back. So the glove box is deep. But when you're sitting in the, in the driver's seat, reaching over into the glove box, you know, even if you're parked, forget about it. Obviously, I wouldn't do it when I was driving, but it's very difficult. You actually have to get out, walk around to the passenger side, and, and if you've got something stuffed deep in the box there, to get at it. Um, so I've got my drink here in the cup holder. And now let's just say for a second I want to plug my, my MP3 player in. I was thrilled to have an MP, MP3 jack. My last, my last vehicle did not have one. Um, so that's one of the things I was looking for also. A lot of cars now have an MP3 um, cable or jack tucked away somewhere. Some of them have it in a glove box. Some of them have it between the seats. Sobs is right here in the front of the dash. So if I want to play my iPod, I've got to put it, plug that cable in. So now I've got a cable that hangs down here. And if I take my iPod, put the camera down for a minute, and I plug my iPod in. Okay, now I've got my iPod plugged in. But now where do I put it? I've got this cable here. It's going to be in the way of the shifter, so I guess maybe I could stick it, stick it in this little compartment here. So now I've got my iPod stuck in the compartment there, and I've got this cable hanging down. And I guess that's okay, but it's just, you know... For a $40,000 car, you would think they would give you another place for the for the uh, cable to plug into. So while my iPod's plugged in, let's just assume I need to charge my phone. Well, the charger that I, I normally use is right back here behind the uh, shifter. So now I can plug that in there. And again, I'll put the camera down, and I'll plug my phone in to charge it up. Okay, now my phone's plugged in. So now what do I do with the phone? Well, I guess I can stick this back here, too. So now I've got this cable hanging down from my iPod. I've got a cable sticking out here from my phone. And I've got them both crammed into this little compartment right here. If I want to change the song on my iPod, I've got to, you know, sift through the cables and lift up the phone. It's just very inconvenient. I'm not, I'm not trying to sound like a, like a whiner, like, you know, but it, it is very inconvenient. Now, had I known this before the fact, would I have still bought the car? Mm, Probably because of the because of the price and the financing, but uh, had it not been for the price and financing, I, I would have probably thought twice about it. Um, it's just very inconvenient. Now I've got my iPod cable plugged in with my drink here. If I decide I want to, I finish my drink and I want to close this cup holder, I can't do it. It hits the iPod cable right there. So now I've got to unplug my iPod cable. Now I can close the cup holder. Plug my iPod back in, which of course, once I unplug it, I have to go back to the iPod and turn it back on again. So again, it's just very, very inconvenient. Um, the other issue I have, uh, small issue, there's no reading lights in the back seat. Um, you know, I've got overhead lights, but no reading lights, which would have been a nice... Uh, the Saab used to have them, I guess they, they cut them out for some reason. Um, probably another... Um, cost-cutting move by GM but anyway that's my other issue um, so again lack of storage space uh, a cluster of cables um, and having the iPod jack right there in the dash to me is very inconvenient now getting back to the more some of the positive things about the car the fact that I can drop this into manual mode and paddle shift from the wheel is a lot of fun I can also put it into uh, sport mode and I can again drop it into manual shift and then shift right from the wheel as I'm driving. And you can probably see I'm actually in a kind of a remote location here, just outside of, of town, and there's a lot of nice roads to uh, um, to drive here. And I can, you know, it's a lot of fun to be able to be able to drop drop that into manual mode and drive through some of these back roads here. Um, so that's that's a nice feature. Uh, the, again, I'll say this: the the things that were important to me is I wanted to get a, a, a nicer luxury type sedan that I could put a lot of miles on that's known for being reliable that has the features that I wanted in it and uh, was within my price range and Saab this car met all those things absolutely um, so you know overall I'm happy with the vehicle 